What's going on growers, it's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. When it comes to growing a garden, the main goal is to bring in the harvest. So today I wanna to show you a technique on how to focus your tomatoes to grow more fruit with less leaves. Let's go. When it comes to growing tomato plants, there's essentially two ways you can do it. You can either let them bush out or you can prune and stake them. As you can see by a lot of my tomatoes that I'm moving through now, my favorite way to do it is to prune and stake these tomatoes. As you look at me over here, you'll notice that we've got a nice alley here. I call it tomato alley. We've got a number of tomatoes all growing up stakes. Some of them are getting quite tall. I myself am over six foot and this one's kind of low. So this one's about, I'd say about five feet by now. And you can see the way we have it is it's got a lot of airflow, a lot of uh, a lot of space underneath here. And the reason it does is because we prune these leaves. So the idea with this is to prune some of the lower leaves to increase the airflow, to reduce the chances of getting pests and disease because we don't have any leaves touching the ground. When it comes down to it, growing tomatoes like this in the prune stake method, overall you're gonna get a lower yield per plant, but in general you're gonna get a higher system yield because we're growing vertical and we can fit more tomatoes in less space. So what you wanna do, as you see this tomato right here, is allow the tomato to grow up one single stalk up the stake. The way we do this is once a tomato start to produce suckers when they're young, as you can see right here, and what a sucker is, is, is this, this growth that'll grow between the crotch of the main stem and one of your leaves. And it's kind of like where the leaves are unfolding. And what that'll do is that'll continue to grow, get strong, and it'll uh, bush your tomato out. We don't want to do this though. We want to remove those suckers to grow up the one stalk to give us that vertical look to open up a lot of air, a lot of sunlight, which will make us less susceptible to disease. But what it'll also do is allow us to get, like I said, maybe less tomatoes, but they're gonna get bigger. They're gonna be higher in more vitamin C because they get more sunlight. And overall, it's just gonna give us that open, airy look, especially if you're in a humid climate like me. We're only gonna wanna do this with indeterminate tomatoes though, not determinate tomatoes. When it comes to determinate tomatoes, they're just gonna produce one harvest, one big harvest. So we wanna let those kind of bush out more. The only thing we would do in pruning is maybe remove some of those lower leaves, which I'll show you coming up here. When it comes to growing these tomatoes, as you'll notice in this plant here, I've pruned the lower branches, whether or not it was a determinate or an indeterminate. I'm only growing indeterminate here because that's my favorite kind of tomato. But the idea with pruning the lower leaves is you don't want any of the leaves touching the ground because when it's touching the ground, that can be, make it a lot more susceptible to different kinds of diseases, pests, things like that. And then it could trail up your tomato plant. So you'll notice this tomato here. A lot of these lower leaves, they're getting yellow and they could carry some disease. So we're gonna to wanna to remove those. There's a big difference when you allow your tomato to actually uh, get a lot of airflow underneath. It's truly gonna help it. I mean, this really depends on what climate you're in and if you have mulch down as well, because if you don't have any mulch down and you're in a super hot climate, some of these lower leaves could actually help protect uh, your soil so it doesn't dry out as quick. But what I suggest you do is get a nice thick mulch down there. So we're gonna remove some of these lower leaves here to help increase the airflow and overall just help the health of the plant. The timing of this is important though. We wanna make sure we do it on a, well, I think on a nice hot dry day. You don't wanna prune this tomato and then have the rain come the next day because the more rain, the more water, it's gonna just gonna open you up to more uh, susceptibility to disease. Now I'm going to remove these lower leaves here. As you can see, some of them are starting to yellow. So this will really help increase the ventilation, like I mentioned. I'm just gonna take these leaves out. Uh, be gentle, make sure we're not cutting into the stem at all. And this is definitely help. This variety here is a goldy yellow tomato. So it's a nice uh, heirloom variety. And after I move all these leaves, I'm gonna make sure I throw them out. I'm not gonna leave them in the garden because we don't wanna leave some of these dead leaves in here. That'll just be a, an increased chance of bringing that uh, diseases in, which we truly don't want. So sometimes when I have some leaves here that I don't wanna cut, I'll just cut about halfway, like right here, to make sure it's not touching the ground at all. And if you want, you could remove some of these leaves up to the first fruit cluster if you live in a super humid climate. But I like how it is right here. I want to keep some of the fa uh, fan leaves because I think that helps you know, uh, with the photosynthesis and helps actually increase some of the size of the tomatoes and some of the flavor. So I like to remove some of those leaves. But what we want to do is overall make our tomato focus truly on production. That's how we're moving these leaves at the bottom here to bring the ventilation to uh, bring in some of the hormones to actual the production of tomatoes. That's another reason we're removing those suckers. Those suckers can just uh, spend a lot of the growth and a lot of hormones and a lot of energy on growing. We want this tomato to focus on producing. As you can probably see by my face, the sweat coming off of it, that it's hot out here today. But that's no reason, in my opinion, for us not to get out here, to take advantage of this day, to get some of the work done that needs to be done to help get us closer to that harvest.
So some people, um, when it comes down to it, they either complain or they look for excuses and other people get out here, they plant, they take action because basically everyone knows that we should be growing some of our own food if we can, if we have the space. So even if you have a patio or something, I encourage you to get out there, to get some things planted, to eat that fresh food for yourself, to get it, to get those nutrients that you just can't get from things in the stores. If you guys are enjoying the video, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to contribute to the channel, if you love what we're doing here, check out some of the merch. Here's a new turquoise shirt that I just got. I love this color. I think it just pops. And I think it kind of, as people can see that food forest, maybe question, what is that? Look up online and we can get more people growing, more people growing food forests and working with nature and just getting back to the way things should be. Here's another location where we're growing a lot of tomatoes. As you can see, we're growing them vertically, getting use of that most space as possible. And in this section, you'll see it's relatively shaded. This is just the earlier part of the day, but just because you have a little bit of shade doesn't mean you can't grow some things like tomatoes. I'm in the food forest now. And another thing when it comes to tomatoes, besides just pruning these lower branches, as you can see down here, here to increase that airflow as when we did a few days ago and removing those suckers to make sure that you're get growing up that single stem when you have the indeterminate tomato and if you're in a super super warm and hot location and you could have possible injury of sun scald from too much sun you could actually leave some of the suckers in the middle here you allow some of the suckers to grow and what it'll do is shade some of your tomatoes but when you're in a location like me where especially in this spot here, we don't get a really, really lot of sun. We can just remove all those suckers to make sure we're getting a lot of airflow. And as you can see, things are excelling nicely. Now that summer is truly here, it's getting real hot. Tomatoes are loving the heat, but Tuck started to get hot out here just like me. So we had to give him a little haircut. As you can see, he's still a little warm, but he's definitely cooled off. We had to prune some of the hair off, just like we prune our tomatoes to cut, increase the airflow to make sure he can enjoy himself out here just as much as we are. So one thing besides just, uh, to help your tomatoes along besides pruning them and staking them is to actually plant a lot of companions. As you can see right here, we've got a big borage flower growing, and this is supposedly one of the best companion flowers for tomatoes. One of the reasons for that is that it's said to actually make the tomatoes taste better. So this thing is loaded with flowers, brings in a lot of pollinators, helps the tomato plant. Also, we've got companions like here, we've got some curled purple basil, which is a good companion for tomatoes. Another basil plant right in front of us here. We've even got some rosemary planted there. And then throughout this tomato section, we've just got more and more basil planted. I'll show you another purple variety, purple variegated basil that I have right down here. So this is a beautiful variety. And then over here, we've got another variety of basil. So we're making sure we're getting the most out of these locations, but also planting companions together. That's where it comes back to creating a garden that you just you actually design. You don't go out there and just throw things randomly together. You think about it before you design a system to help work for itself. This way you're not putting all the work in yourself. I've been growing tomatoes for years. One of the reasons is because we live in New Jersey. Jersey is known for just having incredible tomatoes. So I've tried almost every different kind you can do it. I've tried bushy, I've tried planting them directly from seed. And this prune steak method, tying them up and cutting these lower leaves at the bottom, has proven to be the best for me over the years. That's why I'm continu continuing to use it. That's why I want to share it with you. And I think it'll be valuable for everyone that lives in a similar climate to me. Here's another tomato that we haven't taken these lower leaves off. So we're just going to go through and nothing crazy, but just cut these lower leaves, the ones that are touching the ground. Like I mentioned, you could cut them all the way up to the, the first fruit set. Another reason that it's good to come out here and remove some of these lower leaves is you'll often see some of the suckers like we have right here. So we're gonna take that sucker out so it's not pulling a lot of the growth hormones from our tomatoes. And like we've mentioned in the beginning of the video, we're gonna remove a lot of these leaves like we did down here and allow the tomato to, produce, to focus on producing fruit. That's the goal. That's why we're guarding out here. We wanna make sure we're eating the fruit right from the plants and getting as much as we possibly can. We're putting some of the time in, we're putting some of the effort in. We wanna make sure it's worth it. That's today's video growers, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some true value out of it. And I hope by watching this video, you, you go out there, you take the chance to prune your tomatoes, to remove those suckers, prune some of the lower leaves, open up to more light. I think it'll bring you a lot of success. Like I've said, this isn't the first time I've ever done this. I've tried many different methods and this seems to grow best to give us the biggest harvest. And again, we're growing vertical. We're using that extra space. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Me and Tuck wanted to thank all of you for your continued support in the comments, for your love. They're usually always kind words, and if there's something, it's usually constructive criticism. We love hearing your opinion, we love hearing what you have to say, and we really, truly value that. If you guys want to support the channel too, check out the merchandise in the link in the description or at the bottom of the video. Me and Tuck will be back at you real soon, pumping out more videos. We out.